Welcome to another Fast Tech video. In this one, I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix the very notorious and common PS5 controller stick drift issue. This problem is caused by bad or dirty potentiometers inside the analog sticks. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix this on your own today. Before we start, please go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. This video was brought to you by the FastTac Pro Auto Kit, which is an automatic screwdriver we're going to be using to disassemble this device today. Not only does it disassemble this device, but all other kinds of electronics, including but not limited to your PlayStation, your Xbox, your Apple iPhone, your MacBook, your TV set. If it has screws, this is going to disassemble it. If you're not satisfied with this purchase, we offer a full money back guarantee within 30 days. Let's get started. To start this assembly, we're going to have to remove this black piece of plastic trim at the front. We're going to use a pry tool from our FastTech Pro Toolkit, which is a toolkit you can use to disassemble not just your PS5 DualSense controller, but your PS5, PS4, Xbox, and much more. The easiest way to go about doing this is we remove the clips from the bottom on the two sides here, like this. And then lift the trim up and it's gonna come off like that. Once we have that trim removed, now we're going to have to remove the R1 and L1 buttons and we can do that by sticking our pry tool in here like this and then lifting up. And you want to hold on to the button with your finger because otherwise it's going to fly out. Like that. Like that, don't worry, you're not gonna break them. They're supposed Now, we're gonna see some screws under those buttons we removed. And there's also screws at the bottom here. We're gonna remove these screws using our FastTech Pro Auto Kit, which is an automatic screwdriver. That's gonna save you a lot of time with your electronics disassemblies because it's automatic. We're gonna remove these screws One here. There's another one here. There's two. Now there's some clips at the bottom that we must disengage. This clip right here, and then this clip right here. But as we're disengaging these clips, we want to lift up the front side of the controller up from the bottom, and we want to keep that pressure, because if we don't, then the clip's just going to re-engage. So we want to keep some pressure, disengage these two clips. And once you get them off enough, you should be able to just release the back panel at this point, like this. And the back panel is gonna come off. There's no cable, nothing in between that you have to worry about. Now we're at the battery. If, you have it, if you're having any charging issues or if you're controller pulses orange and it doesn't hold the charge or the battery dies very very quickly and eventually you're going to get the orange light on the controller which and it's not even going to turn on even with the cable plugged in that's because of a dead battery so what you do is you just pull it out like this there's a connector you want to pull it from the white part not the off white part underneath because that's part of the controller's logic board or you can also just grab all of the cables at the same time. Not one cable, not one wire, but all of the wires and wiggle and pull like this. 
that might be easier than trying to grab the connector because a lot of people just end up ripping out the socket from the controller logic board and that's no good we're gonna have to remove this mic and get it out of the way and just be gentle with it there's a very sensitive ribbon cable we're just gonna go ahead and remove the cable first just grab on the cable pull it and then the mic just came out with the cable like that that's the back mic there's a screw that we have to remove like that and then the battery holster is gonna come out at this point we're gonna remove the haptic triggers by just pulling out this cable like this you just pull it out same thing on this side pull it out be gentle with these cables they're easy to break there's another cable at the back here for the front mic we removed the rear mic earlier this is for the front mic we're gonna pull out this cable there's a plastic piece on top that's that the purpose of that is so that you can grab it and pull out the cable the data part of the cable is this part right here be careful with that only use the plastic piece to pull it out once that's out of the way now we're gonna have to remove this cable up top also a pull cable we can just grab onto it and just pull it out this is the cable for the touchpad and boom just like that it's gonna come out at this point if you push down on these analog sticks like this the logic board is just gonna pop out and if you're trying to fix the analog sticks you should have access to the logic board you have to remove the rubber part which these pieces just come off like this same thing with this one here just pull it off like this and now if you had a issue with just the rubber you can replace those sticks at this point in time if you need replacement analog sticks we sell just the rubber this piece right here the the stick itself and also the mechanism if you need the mechanism so now i'm going to show you guys how to fix the stick drift issue which is caused by these analog sticks and I'm going to be showing you guys how to remove the component that causes a stick drift issue. Now, these analog sticks have potentiometers that have this component inside them. Then there's a piece that conducts electricity and it, it tells the board where the analog stick mechanism exactly is. And those wear out after time. So. To replace those, what you have to do is get a pry tool from our Fastac Pro Toolkit, stick it in here like this. You're gonna feel it come up. You're gonna feel it come off like this, boom. See this component inside? It looks like a disc. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it out with our pry tool, simply lift it out. And it should come out quite easily, but if it doesn't come out easily the first time, don't try to use too much force gently lift it out and once it does come out you'll see that it has this ring on it that ring is what conducts electricity on the track on the analog stick part that's connected to the board and it tells you where the position of the analog stick is now this sometimes gets dirty or damaged since this is a part that's mechanical and makes physical contact you can replace these with hall based sensors which is the best solution but the easy solution is to clean them out with some q-tips and isopropyl alcohol of course purchased at fasttechstore.com you also want to clean the inside of the track which is the orange part on this controller on some controller motherboards that 
part might not be orange it could be blue or something else but you also want to clean the inside of the track again using some isopropyl alcohol and q-tips purchased of course from fasttechstore.com i'm just going to spray my alcohol in there and run my q-tip inside in a circular motion it still amazes me that they would choose this old analog stick design when there are hall based sensors out there that would prevent this problem from happening but it shows you how much they care but anyways i digress we're going in a circular motion here again cleaning as much as we possibly can you want to do this with all four of the analog stick position sensors that we have there's two for each side x and y axis of course and again i'm going to repeat this process a few times till I'm satisfied with the clean. And then once you're done cleaning it, you put it back in and it only goes in one way. You're gonna see, you're gonna see that there is a piece. Before I keep continuing to give you guys free knowledge over and over again, I have a very important message. These designer suits are not cheap, so please buy parts from fasttechstore.com, otherwise I'm gonna go bankrupt. Now you can continue watching the rest of this video. There's a bit in the middle that looks like a rectangle and it only goes in one way on the analog stick, so it's easy to put back on. As you can see, I've lined it up with this, with this piece here. Make sure that it lines up like a Lego piece. You wanna make sure that it's seated properly if it doesn't go in the first time. Don't push and don't use too much force. It should get back in the, as smoothly as, it, as we got it off, like this. It's clicking back in. Now I can feel it clicking in nicely, like that. You should hear that noise. And once you hear that noise, you wanna run the analog stick real quick. Make sure everything's in place. Make sure there's no gap, just like there isn't any gap here. Now I'm gonna repeat this step on the rest of the potentiometers. Now you should only need to do this if you have issues with both analog sticks, but if you have issue with one analog stick or one direction, you can choose to only do it on one side. I also ended up removing the logic board from the frame using a soldering iron and that is something you can do if you're concerned about ripping the wire off the logic board and possibly the trace. But since I have a lot of experience doing this, I left the wires of the vibration motors attached to the analog stick. So as you can see here, now I'm just repeating the same steps on the rest of the analog sticks, cleaning them all out with isopropyl alcohol and also cleaning the inside of the track as well, which is very, very important. Now, if these steps fail, you are gonna have to replace the complete analog mechanism, which we do also sell on our website at fasttechstore.com. If anyone's interested, I'll include links in the description box. We also stock the potentiometers and all other PS5 controller components on our website at fasttechstore.com so do check us out now we're going to reinstall the covers on the analog sticks they only go on one way line it up and then push it down like that now we can push the motherboard in but make sure that none of these cables are in the way this cable here and there's a microphone cable at the bottom you want to make sure that these are not in the way like that now let's push the logic board in place. Make sure that the analog stick at the front is not getting in the way. And you wanna make sure that this cable here is not getting in the way. And there are clips on the side. There's a clip on this side here, and then there's a clip on this side here. Of course, some of these cables are gonna to try to go, get back in the way. Just make sure that that does not happen. Push everything in place. Make sure these analog sticks are pushed through. Make sure this cable comes out. If you remove these wires with a soldering iron, you need to reconnect them. These are the vibration motor wires. This step is only if you've desoldered the wires or if they've come off accidentally. Soldering is not as difficult as it looks, especially if it's basic soldering like this. If you need a soldering iron, check out fasttechstore.com. 
Now we're gonna make sure that the motherboard gets clipped in once again because it did come out of place. Watch that cable again. These cables are sneaky like that. They like to hide under the board, but we're gonna prevent that from happening. Let's secure this cable in place. This one goes in here. These are for the triggers. This one goes in here. This one goes in here. Then this one here is for the touchpad at the front. And this one has a white guide that shows you exactly where the cable goes on. This mic sometimes likes to fall out of place. So we're gonna make sure that it's tucked in its slot. There's a slot right here that it goes in like that. Now we're gonna install the panel that holds the battery and the back mic. There is a screw that holds it in. I reinstall it with our Fastec Pro Auto kit. And because it is magnetized, it makes our job a little bit easier. Secure that screw. Now let's put that back mic where it belongs, like this. Goes through here and then there is a cable that connects it. I actually sometimes find it easier to connect the cable first, like that. Push it in its place and then secure the mic where it needs to be. Be careful with this cable, it's kind of easy to break. Like that, now we're gonna install the battery. Black side of the wire is supposed to be facing north. Put it in its place, push it in, and these cables need to be tucked under this black piece here, like this. Boom. Now we're gonna install the back panel, which goes on like this. Okay. And then just push it in place. There were four screws that we removed that we're going to reinstall. One of the screws goes in here. One of them goes here. And the last two go at the bottom here. And here. Now we're gonna reinstall the L1 and R1 buttons, which you can simply line up and then push in place. Like this. And now for this piece of trim, which goes in like this over the analog sticks, these two points go in first, like that. Push it in place, push it a little forward and in. Clip the bottom in, make sure it's clipped in from here. And now we've successfully reassembled our PS5 controller. And if you want to test out your controller, I recommend heading over to gamepad-tester.com, which is a great online tool which is free to use and this video is not sponsored by them i just think that this is a great tool to test stick drift or any other issues with any game controller so i'll include links in the description box and the top comment for whoever's interested as you can see in this clip it will tell you exactly which stick is drifting and by how much and that's it for another video from fast tech don't forget to subscribe to the channel like the video because these videos take a lot of time and effort to make so a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated and don't forget that if you need any ps5 controller parts from the buttons triggers to the analog mechanism the potentiometers inside them check us out at fasttechstore.com thanks for watching another fast tech video before you leave make sure to subscribe to the channel and smash that like button that helps us out more than you know this is Shiroz from Fast Tech signing out and I'll see you in the next one.